Good morning, all the students. We'll now uh, move on to second lecture under this module five. Can you see the presentation? How is the weather on your side? Is the connection good? It is too chill today because of cyclone in Chennai, right? That we have that effect here also. So are you okay with the connections? Can you hear me properly? Can you see the presentation? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma good. good. Okay, in the last class, we have seen how to evaluate the, uh, how, uh, what are the basic steps to evaluate the hypothesis and how to estimate the hypothesis accuracy. Now, while estimating the hypothesis accuracy, we have considered two important measures, sample error and the true error. Sample error is represented by error S of the training examples. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, error S of the hypothesis and true error is represented as error D of H. Okay, so sample uh, our uh, objective should be that we should reduce the true error so that it matches with the sample error. Means we have to develop a machine learning model which is highly generalizable, which works well with training data, should also work well with the unseen data so that on the training examples, if the sample error is um, say 5%, even the true error with the unseen data also should be around that 5%. There should not be much difference between sample error and the true error. In that case, we say that our machine learning model is highly generalizable. It is performing with good accuracy, right? This is how we understood how to estimate the performance of, uh, sorry, how to estimate the hypothesis accuracy. In today's class, before going into depth of how to evaluate the hypothesis uh, in detail, we'll see the basics of sampling theory. Basics of sampling theory is very much important for you to understand what are the uh, underlying concepts, how to summarize the results of machine learning model because machine learning models will give lots of uh, details like r square measure f statistic standard deviation quotients um, then you will get uh, say t error uh, sorry t value t critical value z value lots of such terms you come across when you try to summarize the model's performance. Now, how to interpret them? Okay, these measures are greater than this particular threshold. So I select this machine learning model. These measures are lesser than the threshold. So this machine learning model is not performing well. Up to that extent, anybody can analyze. But to take a correct decision and uh, select between the best performing models, you should understand what are these terms? Why do you actually, um, uh, why the uh, model generates these terms in the summary? How do you infer that that particular machine learning model is performing very well with the sample at hand? So you should know all these measures. You should not be confused when I talk about standard deviation, variance, mean, estimator, estimator model, uh, binomial distribution, normal distribution, when I say all these, you should not be confused in what context I'm using those terms. For that, I wanted to make clear about all the basics of uh, sampling theory that is related to uh, statistical uh, inference. Okay, now in this, um, under this concept basics of sampling theory, we are going to study about error estimation and estimation, estimating binomial proportions and the binomial distribution, mean and variance, estimator, bias and variance, confidence intervals, and two-sided and one-sided bounds. They will help us to perform two-sided and one-sided tests. Okay, all these should be made clear. When you want to become a data scientist, you should know all these uh, topics very well. Only then 
you will know what exactly you are doing and how you are developing an application in order to assist in taking decisions about um, based on some data set okay and those decisions are very crucial uh, say in machine critical applications or in business if you don't take a right decision then it may um, spoil the good name of your organization or it will cause some distrust or uh, your it will make your application unreliable so you have to take proper decisions and to take those proper decisions these statistical concepts are very much required okay now we are going to see what is a random variable what is probability distribution expected value or mean of a sample variance of a random variable standard deviation of some variable binomial distribution normal distribution central limit theorem estimator estimation bias and what is the confidence interval all these terms i am going to elaborate uh, for you by discussing different examples okay now let us first see what is a random variable let's see the definition a random variable can be viewed as the name of an experiment with a probabilistic outcome its value is the outcome of the experiment right that is called as a random variable say if you are tossing a coin if you are tossing a coin what would be the probable outcomes head or tail right so the probability of your outcome becoming head or the probability of your outcome becoming the tail each of them is 0.5 and 0.5 right when you toss a coin what is the chance of getting a head 50% what is the chance of getting a tail 50% right and in terms of probability if you express it is 0.5 and 0.5 right now in that case you can't guess what would be the outcome when you are tossing the coin only when you see the coin um, um, with its face on you can notice whether it is head or tail before tossing the coin can you uh, guess what would be the output with 100% confidence no uh, do you know do you guess uh, can you guess what would be the outcome of that toss no that is why it is called as random variable in this case x is called as the random variable why because it doesn't have uh, we can't say with 100% confidence what would be the output if you take rolling a dice it has six possible outcomes right now in that case probability of x equal to 1 probability of x equal to 2 and so on you can take probability of x equal to 6 right each of them sharing this probability 1 which would be 1 by 6 probability of x becoming 1 means when you roll a die what is the probability of getting 1 out of 6 outcomes you are getting one outcome that is 1 by 6 again what is the probability of getting 2 when you roll a die out of 6 outcomes you want one outcome that is 2 2 on the top of the dice so that is one outcome you are expecting out of 6 outcomes that is why it is 1 by 6 the probability is 1 by 6 okay or 10 divided by 6 you can express it in the sorry 1 divided by 6 you can express it in the decimal format okay that would be the probability of that particular variable so it is called as random variable because you can't expect the outcome before the experiment okay now read the definition it will make some sense for you a random variable can be viewed as the name of an experiment with a probabilistic outcome you don't know what is the chance probability so it is associated with some probabilistic outcome its value is the outcome of the experiment what is the random variable's value it is the outcome of the experiment in this case head or tail in this case 1 or 2 or 3 up to 6 okay 
is it clear what is a random variable now now when i am measuring um, heights of students in my class is it a random variable it is called a deterministic variable why because when i measure something i get the measurement and i can see that i can uh, say uh, okay when i am measuring this uh, i can stick to this particular weight of the student okay that is called as deterministic variable or um, uh, say if i give you date of birth and ask you to calculate the age given a year in that case um, uh, um, say i give the date of birth is 1995 and now it is 2020 so what is the age of that person 25 you can easily calculate right that is, and you can calculate that with 100% confidence in that case we call it as deterministic variable again if i give you joining date of an employee and what is his survey what is his experience in that particular organization you can easily calculate with 100% confidence so that is called as deterministic variable but in this random variable or sometimes you call it as stochastic variable because the word the term is little complex need not worry it is same as random variable it is another it is another name for random variable random variable or stochastic variable stochastic variable or random variable is when you can't guess the output when the output is random when some probability is associated with the output when some chance is associated with the output in that case you call it as stochastic variable or random variable got it students is it clear okay now next term is probability distribution what is a probability distribution a probability distribution for a random variable y if you take a random variable y you know now what is a random variable right so no more doubts a probability distribution for a random variable y specifies the probability y equal to yi any value y equal to yi that y will take on the value yi for each possible value yi it is something like nityananda speech right uh, but um, you have to understand the definition properly a probability distribution for a random variable y you are taking y say coin toss you are performing an um, uh, coin toss experiment now for a random variable y it specifies the probability that y equal to yi either y equal to head or y equal to tail that y will take on the value yi yi is a set of values head or tail in the coin toss experiment right for each possible value of yi either h or t okay now consider you are making two coin toss experiment two coin toss experiment means one two two times you toss the coin now what are the uh, what are the possible outcomes here you may get both heads you may get a head and a tail you may get a tail and a head and both tails right how many possible uh, how many possible outcomes here total four possible outcomes okay now probability distribution can be taken as a table it can be represented as a table with recording the outcome say number of heads we are interested in number of heads and its probability okay now if zero number of heads you are expecting what is the probability zero number of heads means total how many outcomes you have four out of that what is the probability it is 0.25 out of four if you want zero heads then it is um, only this outcome that is both being tail only one outcome you are interested in number of heads to be zero means when you uh, perform an experiment of two coin tosses if you want zero number of heads 
in that case this is having heads this is having heads this is having uh, sorry this is having single head and this is having single head so what is the only outcome you are interested in here no heads at all that is both tails so out of four outcomes one you are interested in one outcome you are interested in that is 1 by 4 so it is 0.25 got it now what is the probability of number of heads being 1 so how many such outcomes are there one number of head being one this is one and this is two so two outcomes are there out of which you are expecting one outcome so it is 0.50 whenever you toss a coin either head tail will appear or tail head will appear if you want number of heads to be one okay so you are interested in two possible outcomes here but what would be the original outcome only one possible outcomes are two but only one outcome when you toss two coins so uh, uh, one after the other so the probability here is 0.5 that is what you are mentioning here now number of heads to be two both the result of coin toss should be two heads uh, sorry to uh, should be heads in that case you are interested only in this outcome this is not matching your requirement this is not matching your requirement this is not matching your requirement because you want two heads okay so you are interested only in this outcome out of how many outcomes four outcomes so it is 1 by 4 so this becomes again 0.25 now this is called the probability distribution of number of heads got it probability distribution of number of heads any doubt in the students okay now if you want probability distribution of y lesser than or equal to 1 what do you mean by that what is the probability of an outcome y say head number of heads lesser than or equal to 1 means probability of zero heads and probability of number of heads 1 okay so it can be written as probability of y equal to 0 plus probability of y equal to one did you understand this probability of getting one or lesser than one heads that can be written as probability of number of heads equal to 0 plus probability of number of heads equal to 1 what is y here by random variable what is the outcome of random variable here i am expecting number of heads i am interested in number of heads i wanted to know the probability distribution of my random variable y when it is taking the values of heads okay so it is probability of y less than or equal to 1 so i am interested in two outcomes one is probability of heads equal to 0 plus probability of heads equal to 1 so what will be your answer now probability of heads equal to 0 it is 0.25 plus probability of heads equal to 1 that is 0.50 so you will get the answer as 0.75 okay so this probability distribution can be understood as the probability of values it can take okay here in number of heads in two coin toss experiment you have three uh, three uh, outcomes you are interested in related to head number of head 0 number of head 1 number of head 2 so this is called as the probability distribution of the random variable y where y turns out to be heads in two coin toss experiment got it what is probability distribution okay now the expected value 
the expected value or mean of a random variable y is represented as e of y and that is nothing but it is summation of all the random variable values multiplied by probability of probability distribution of that random variable that symbol mu y or the sample of y is represented as e by i'll make it more clear for you when you read a definition it will not be clear but once you start understanding it in in depth by referring to various examples and read the definition again that will be more clear for you now when i take a sample say i take the marks of students in my class and take their average in this college i want to measure the performance of students and i am taking the sample from mca department now i measure the average marks of those students that is called as expected value or the mean of the sample got it but when i take the average of all department students marks that is called as the population mean when your sample mean is equal to the population mean then we can say that this sample is a good representative sample because its mean is in line with the population mean sample's mean is in line with the population mean understood so what is the expected value whenever you are taking a sample you measure its mean it is called as the expected value or it is re represented by e of y or simply mu y mu is mean mean of that particular sample y and you should see that the sample mean should be equal to population not should be equal to if the sample means a uh, sample mean is equal to population mean then you say that it is a representative sample the bias related to the sample is very very less it is not deviating from the population mean so it is a good sample okay now what is variance whenever you talk about normal distribution whenever you talk about linear regression logistic regression and uh, as you go on with different machine learning models you mainly keep repeating these terms mean and variance so you understood what is mean mean is average of the sample now what is variance the variance of a random variable is if you take the random variable as y variance of y can be represented as mean of deviations of every sample point from the mean of the sample whole square some square okay this is called as the variance so how do you write mean in normal mathematical terms mu of y how do you write it how do you write this mu of y sum of all values or we are taking y here all values in a sample yi by n this is your mean right adding all the values y1 y2 y3 y4 in your sample add them divide by the number of sample points that will give you the mean right mean means average represented by mu right now how do you find the variance each of the sample point difference or deviation from the mean the average of all the sample points is mu now each sample points difference from that average 
square them add them and divide by the number of sample points that will give you the variance of y the distribution of y if you have average in your hand and some variances are very high say some points are having extreme values then the variance value will be very high why because the sample points difference from the average is very much very high in that case its square will be even higher which will increase the value of variance which indicates that variance differences in the sample points is too much okay that is how you measure variance of a random variable it tells us about the dispersion or distribution of data around its mean whether it is near to the mean or far away with the mean if the variance is very high then we say that the sample points are varying too much say one weight of the student is 50 kg another weight of the student is 100 kg another weight of the student is 180 kg in that case the variance of that sample will be very high because though the average uh, say 50 plus 80 plus 100 if you take divided by 3 what will be the value 180 230 by 3 so you will get some value around um 76 okay so this will be your average now how to calculate the variance 50 minus 76 whole square plus 80 minus 76 whole square each sample points difference from the mean 100 minus 76 whole square add them up divide by the number of sample points that is 3 this will give you the variance because the variance is too high the difference between the weights is too high the variance will be high but if you have somewhere 50 51 52 weights like this then the average will be 51 now when you calculate the variance it will be very less did you notice now the difference between the weights is very less here but the difference between the weights is too high here so the variance of a random variable will characterize the width or dispersion of the distribution about about its mean around its mean okay now read this the variance of a random variable variance of y is represented as expected value of the deviations square expected value means mean that is what we are doing here right divided by n expected value of each sample points difference from the mean square them up and calculate the mean that is the estimated value and that will show you the variance in the sample points now what is standard deviation this is much easier you can just apply square root to the variance that is already calculated that will give you the standard deviation standard deviation will explain you what is the spread in the data what is the distribution of the data whether there is high spread in the data like 50 80 100 or low spread in the data like 50 51 52 when we take the weights of students right in 50 51 52 case standard deviation will be less but in 50 80 100 case standard deviation will be high okay so the standard deviation of y is square root of the variance the symbol sigma y is used to represent the standard deviation of y okay so whenever you see sigma of y or sigma of x it tells us about the de standard deviation of the sample points in the sample y or in the sample x or values of the random variable y 
or values of the random variable x okay now what is binomial distribution binomial distribution gives the probability of observing r heads in a series of n independent coin tosses if the probability of heads in a single toss is p okay when you take the probability of head x taking the value of head in a single coin toss is probability of x equal to h then the binomial distribution will give you the probability of observing r heads say two heads in a series of n independent coin tosses say three coin tosses in this case now what is the probability of observing two heads in series of three coin tosses okay that can be explained by the binomial distribution now what is a normal distribution normal distribution is a bell shaped probability distribution that covers many natural phenomena lots of uh, phenomena you take uh, say as i said weights of students in a class very less number of students will have less weight or more weight but most of the students weight fall in this average range right when you take mca classes students weight average let it be 50 so very less number of students will have very less than 50 and very high than 50 in that case we call this as normal distribution now when you take social networks in social networks um uh, very few celebrities will uh, sorry very few people will have very few connections and um more number of connections but most of the people will have average number of connections average number of means moderate number of connections right that is how we can understand about normal distribution now if you take uh, life expectancy uh, in, in uh, different countries then very less number of countries will have very low ex life expectancy and very high expectancy most of the countries half average age average life expectancy right like that most of the natural phenomena most of the phenomena we take follow this na uh, normal distribution which is like a inverted bell shape now when we take a distribution like this and take the mean here this is the mu okay now most of the values fall around this mean itself and very less number of values fall away from the mean okay this is called as normal distribution now when i calculate the average weight of a class as 50 when i start taking each of the students uh, weight separately now to see what is the deviation now most of the students will have 49 48 Uh, sorry 51 uh, 48 uh, 52 around this value only but most of the uh, very less number of students will have some weight like 30 or some extreme weight like 80 like that okay so this is called as normal distribution all the random variables values tend to fall around a particular mean of the distribution that is called as normal distribution now what is central limit theorem central limit theorem is a theorem stating that the sum of a large number of independent identically distributed random variables approximately follows a normal distribution means it generally states that when you go on increasing the size of the sample then the samples mean and variance follow uh, sorry the samples mean follow a normal distribution okay say if i take five students weights among them one student is having very high weight so my average will 
go towards that particular student's weight. But instead of five, if I take 100 students' data, then this extreme weight students' data will be diluted in the average of 100 students. Say 80, 50, and uh, 100, if you take only this much, what would be the average? Uh, we took it as around 76, right? Mm, 76. Now, 182, 30, yeah, 76. Now, if you take 100 students' data, um, I can't write all 100 students, but if you take the 100 students' data, you may get around average as 50. Now, you keep on increasing the sample. Now, the average weight of all those students will tend to fall around this 50 only. It will not be deviated because of some outliers. Okay, that is called as central limit theorem. As you go on increasing the sample, then the mean of that particular sample tend to follow a normal distribution. See this, the central limit theorem states that if you have a population with mean mu, if you have a population with mean average mu and standard deviation sigma and take sufficiently large random samples from the population with replacement, then the distribution of the, uh, leave this if you're not uh, understanding population with replacement and all, just leave this. Okay, population with replacement means whenever you pick something, you keep it back and pick another one. So you will have equal chances of picking the same sample point. Again, that is called as population replace, uh, with replacement. Okay, but at present, to understand this central limit theorem, this is not required. Uh, and take sufficiently large random samples from the population, then the distribution of the sample means will be approximately normally distributed. They follow a normal distribution. So whenever you take a large population's mean and standard deviation sigma and take sufficiently large random samples from this population, then the distribution of this sample mean will be approximately normally distributed. Why? Because you're considering more number of sample points, more and more number of sample points that almost resembles your population mean and uh, that will almost resemble your population mean and variance. I'm repeating again, you have a population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Okay, now you're drawing a sample from that population. Now, if the sample is very low, it doesn't represent the population. So the mean of the sample and the population will vary. But if you go on increasing the size of the sample, say instead of 100 out of 1000 students, now you take 200, now you take 300, now you take 400, you keep increasing the sample size. As you go on increasing the sample size, this sample mean will follow a normal distribution and that sample mean would be approximately equal to the population mean also. Got it? This is called as central limit theorem. All the values will tend to be around the, this mean. Okay? That is why it is called as central limit theorem. As you go on increasing the sample, the average will tend to follow a normal distribution. Now, what is an estimator? An estimator is a random variable y, taking a random variable y, used to estimate some para parameter p of an underlying population. Okay. Now, if you take uh, probability of uh, weights of a student falling around 50 in a class. This, uh, 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 this y is called as the estimator. Why? Because you're trying to calculate 
the mean of that particular class students whether it will fall around 50 or not an estimator is a random variable y you are taking a random variable y used to estimate some parameter p say the weights of the students of an underlying population of a uh, students from a larger college i am taking a particular class as sample from a college uh, from set of college students which is sample which is my population okay see here uh, see here entire college students is the population now one department students i can take as sample now what is the samples mean that is called as estimator and we'll see whether that estimator is equal to the population mean or not we should take a representative sample so that the sample mean or the estimator of this sample will be equal to the population's mean okay then we say that s is a representative sample good sample what we have taken now what is the estimation bias now you get some sample mean as mu y and your population mean as uh say mu p now the difference between the sample mean and the population mean is called as estimation bias because you have a bias in your sampling your estimation will be biased if you have larger difference between your sample mean and the population mean then we say that it is not a representative sample why because the sample is biased it is not representing the entire population say from the college students i have taken more girl students data and less boy students data then that sample is not a representative sample then i get some sample mean which will differ largely from the population mean because my sample is biased my estimation also will be biased did you understand so the difference between the sample mean and the population mean will be called as estimation bias now read this definition estimation bias of y as an estimator for p say performance of the students i am measuring here is the quantity e of y means the mean of the sample minus p the estimator uh, of the population now an unbiased it, it, that is the difference okay now an unbiased estimator is one for which the bias is zero now there is no difference between sample mean and the population mean we call it as unbiased estimator because the bias there is zero there is no difference between sample mean and the population mean means i have taken representative sample i have taken equal number of boys equal number of girls performed a study on the sample and i am applying the study uh, studies inferences or conclusions for the whole college's data now when i see the samples mean and when i see the total college students performance mean both are similar in that case my study is unbiased my estimation is unbiased so i call it as unbiased estimator but if my sample is biased then my sample mean will vary at large from the population mean in that case i say my estimation bias is large because my sample is not representative got it this is called as estimation bias and our objective should be to uh, make this estimation bias as zero so that the uh, sample is a good representation of the larger population so that the conclusions you draw from your sample can be applicable to your larger population the con the conclusions i draw about one department students from the college can be applied to all the college students some, um, population okay means i am trying to make my model generalizable 
my model is built on my department students data and i'm trying to make it generalize to college students data now when i see that there is no difference between these two then my estimation is unbiased whatever i can conclude from my sample i can also apply it to population larger population okay in that case i can call it as unbiased estimate now the last one n percent confidence interval you have seen this right in the last class nine uh, if you have the z value as 1.96 in that case you take the confidence interval as 95% then if you take the confidence interval as 68% then the um, critical value will be 1 what is that critical value said how is it calculated it is the deviation of every sample point from the mean divided by the standard deviation you will get the z score now when you uh, see on internet z score table in that you can find out for 1.96 at 95 uh, uh, sorry uh, yeah um, 1.96 at 95% confidence interval means 0.95 what will be the probability the table will be given easily you just check for 1.9 around what is the value for 0.95 that is 95% confidence interval that will be the probability of the uh, probability associated with that confidence interval so a uh, n percent confidence interval estimate for the parameter p is an interval that includes p with probability 9 n percent means if you take a probability distribution like this and you take 95% confidence interval all this area what is the probability of a parameter p falling in this particular range that probability you can tell with the, you can state with 95% confidence interval now you take another distribution now you want you are sure of only 65% confidence interval in that case we say that the probability of a parameter a value falling within this range is only 65% okay the confidence interval is 65% out of this you can't guarantee its uh, chance okay in that case we call it we are assuring the probability of that parameter with 65% confidence interval means 65% of the time it may fall within this range but 35% of the time it may fall outside this range okay this i have explained you with respect to a machine learning model also now when you take 95% uh, confidence interval then you are stating that your machine learning model will perform with 95% accuracy and 5% of the time there may be error associated with it. okay you can understand in that way also is it clear now what is confidence interval confidence interval is the area under the normal distribution curve around which all your data will probably fall and 5% of the time only it may fall outside that area okay so we are telling that the probability of a parameter falling within this range is uh, you are having 95% confidence for that uh, that a parameter value falls within this range and only 5% of the time it may fall outside the range in this case 65% of the time the parameter's value falls within this normal distribution range 65% and 35% it will fall outside this range it has probability of falling outside this range okay that is how you understand confidence interval estimate of parameter p taking up a value under the normal distribution in the next coming session we'll see the basics of sampling theory these are all the basic definitions what we have gone through in the next class we'll actually see how they are used in various measures 
basics of sampling theory by error estimation and estimating binomial proportions and the binomial distribution when we go forward with these calculations i think the concepts will be more clear for you because we try to apply them in detail any doubts till here students are the basic concepts clear yes ma'am okay anybody if you have a doubt you can personally chat with me so that i can clarify their doubts if at all you don't want to ask on this platform you can ask me separately i'll clarify your doubts regarding this statistical concept okay we'll meet in the next class